It's time for the Drugless Doctor. Call our friend or family member now and let them benefit from today's exciting and life-changing program. If you want to lead a healthier life, the time is now. Hello, this is Dr. Bob and Dr. Case and Dee Maria. We'd like to welcome you once again to another episode of The Drugless Doctor. Today, we are going to be presenting some new uh, scientific information and ways to have assessments of your body. As you know, um, I am the author of Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones that has literally touched ten th tens of thousands of ladies around the world. And I'm very excited to be a part of female hormonal health. My wife and I have been married since 1976, and we worked very hard together to make a difference in individuals' lives. You may be in our office right now. You might be locally here in the Ohio region, or you might be in India, Africa, Ireland, England. We get emails from people literally all over the world. But we have a very special guest. We're going to talk about technology that's very innovative. It's been around for some time, but I know with current changes that are going on and different opinions about mammograms, et cetera, we have a tool that could help make a difference in some of your choices. Dr. Kaysen. I am really excited today to be able to introduce our special guest, Dr. Deborah. Thank you for coming and being a part of this. And I know that she's going to share more about what she specifically does, but also we're going to be partnering with her to be able to offer more assessments within our office to help to support someone's hormonal health. And I know a big component of hormonal health with working with women is different assessments, whether they need to do them, not to do them, what are the proper procedures, but we are out there looking for people like Dr. Deborah to be able to support someone naturally in that holistic realm, chiropractically, but also we want to be able to refer them to other places to get their breast assessments, and I know we're going to be talking specifically today about breast thermography and the benefits of it, but I am really excited to be able to have you to be a part of this so we can help more women to literally save their body pieces and parts and have a holistic approach. So I really appreciate you coming here. And sure. why don't we start from the beginning and just share a little bit about, you can introduce yourself, how you started getting into this, and then we can talk more about the research and specifically what's important because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. Right. Um, I've been practicing as a chiropractor for the past 20 years. About 10 years ago, we started having someone come to our office to do uh, thermo thermograms on our patients. Um, after about seven years of doing that, we decided to go ahead and purchase a, um, a camera ourselves and start doing those in our office. So I've been actually doing the thermograms myself for about the past five years. So, you know, you might be wondering, why are a group of chiropractors talking about breast health? Well, I want you to know this. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I have two ears, and I listen twice as much as I speak. So as drugless doctors, we know that what happens to a woman hormonally impacts their spine and their nervous system. So just briefly, I want to backtrack a bit. The spinal cord is inside of the spine, but what we have learned is that you can literally have misalignment of vertebra that impact organs and tissues. And one of the key ones is the ones that go to the liver. So if your liver is not functioning optimally, Ladies, you could have tender breasts and heavy menses because I had women that were coming in that really trusted me and they were starting to reveal to me some of their personal health concerns. And so because I have been married um, since 1976, my wife had two children, breastfed two um, individuals, my two children, but her mom had breast cancer when she was in the eighth grade. So my wife is very concerned about her health and. Dr. Deborah um, started using the thermography, you said, about 10 years ago in your office, and you started doing it five years ago. Talk to me a little bit about the physiology of uh, the thermography. What exactly are you looking for? Give us the science of what exactly is going on. So when we do a, thermo a thermogram, we're taking six different pictures, basically. So we're getting a front view, a side view, some oblique views, and we're looking for temperature differentials. Um, Everybody has a thermal fingerprint that is going to be the same, that never changes. That's a, big, that's a big word. Can you say that again? A thermal fingerprint. What does that mean? <laughs> that means that when we do a thermogram, we're going to see certain patterns. 
and those patterns are not going to change. They've done studies where they show over a 20 year period and they have annual thermograms, that thermal pattern doesn't change if there's no pathology or, or no cellu cellular changes happening. So we can use this, if we do it every year, we can see if at a cellular level if there's any physiologic changes. And if there are, then we can use what we know with nutrition and lifestyle to help change that before it turns into something more serious like cancer. So we're finding things before it actually turns into cancer and before it would even be found on a mammogram. Wow, that's almost like a mineral tissue analysis that tells you years ahead what's happening at the cellular level. So let me ask you this, with your history and your uh, experience, what have you maybe have seen? Like, I don't want to compare mammograms to thermography because I know there's, there's two different physio mm -hmm. physiologic processes. What have you seen? You know, just talk to me about thermography wise. What have you noticed in your experience? Um, Lesions I'll, or conditions? Right, or? a lot of times on the reports, we'll, it'll come back and it'll talk about lymphatic congestion. Okay. So that's something again that we can address nutritionally and with lifestyle. Um, sometimes the report will indicate fibrocystic disease. So again, things that we can do with nutrition and you know, checking thyroid and checking hormones. Uh, sometimes there'll be um, indications of just hormonal imbalance. Okay. And again, another, you know, we can address that with the things we know that we can do holistically to prevent it from going any further. Do you want to ask anything, Dr. Kaysen? I, I do. So with all of the research that we've also done with our um, pediatrics and pregnancy and hormonally with women and the natural physiology, um, out there right now as far as with mammograms and I know we were talking about the new guidelines with mammograms but I don't think that women really realize that mammograms they expose the breast tissue to radiation which can actually change how your scan turns out. We've had more women in the, in the past several months and I don't know if you've also seen this Dr. Deborah that they'll get a mammogram and they will come back and it will say inconclusive due to breast tissue being dense. Right. Now, a lot of women, they may or may not know that the breast tissue is dense prior to getting the mammogram, but what their uh, follow-up procedure is that is, come back next year, we're gonna do a new assessment, but if you look at any of the research, if you have dense breast tissue, then the results are not gonna be accurate with your mammogram, and you're exposing the breast tissue to radiation, which changes the cells. And they've done studies that with lifestyle, nutrition, other items like the underwire bras and other things that can change the pattern, all with working on those, you can change the breast tissue nutritionally without getting other procedures done in the body. So I think that's why it's so important that we have you here. So tell us more about what you're seeing with, yeah. with your experience of women specifically. So you're absolutely right. I have seen, it because they passed that law where now they have to tell women that they have dense breast tissue, so a lot of women who come in will say that, you know, I had a mammogram and they said I had dense breast tissue. Well, first of all, that doesn't matter with thermography. That's good. That's, thank yes. you for that. That's so, good. and the other thing is they, they tell the women that they have dense breast tissue and that means they can't see what they need to see on the mammogram, but yet they're going to have you come back in six months to look again and not be able to see anything. And again, in six months. So the thermogram takes that out of the equation. The, the dense breast tissue doesn't make a difference there. Another thing is most women before they go through menopause are going to have dense breast tissue. So to get a mammogram before you go through menopause is kind of a waste of time. Okay, let me ask you this, when should a woman, so don't mind me interrupting, okay? Mm -hmm. When should a woman have her first Thermography. Okay, so that's another great thing about thermography is, you know, the guidelines used to be for mammogram, you didn't do a mammogram till you were 40. And there's so many women that are getting breast cancer now in their 20s and 30s. Okay. So as far as thermography goes, you can start doing screening for uh, thermography in your mid to late 20s. They say to wait until about mid to late 20s just because there are still some hormonal changes that are going on when they're younger than that. So you can start screening for breast health in your mid-20s, where from the medical perspective, 
you are waiting now, you're waiting till 50 before you can even do a mammogram, before they even recommend you doing a mammogram. So instead of doing nothing, you can be doing thermography. And there's a lot of women out there who have decided, I'm not doing mammograms anymore, and they're actually doing nothing. So this is a great alternative. This is a better than a nothing. Exactly. So let me ask you, so somebody has thermography, they're 27 years old, they decide they're gonna get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Because see, people plan pregnancies now. So I'm gonna get pregnant when I'm 34. Obviously they wanna get the thermography before they have a baby, I would, I would think, is that wise? Yes. And so then after someone has a child, do you notice changes in their breast tissue? This is a double question. Ones who breastfeed and one that don't. That's You know, I don't have a lot of experience with that because I haven't had many women uh, in their late 20s who uh, have come for thermography yet. I think it just hasn't, it's not out there We're enough for people to not, know about not it. Yet. Not yet, not but yet. we, I promise you, we're gonna change <laughs> yes. the world. And they, um, another thing about thermography is that you can, if there is something going on while you're breastfeeding, okay. you can do a thermogram. Now, okay. yes, the breast is going to look different when you're breastfeeding than when you're not, but you know, a lot of times women don't want to get a mammogram while they're breastfeeding, so this also gives them an option to at least look for something. So I'm gonna ask you another question. So have you noticed the difference between maybe somebody, if you've done any 30s, 40s, Talk to me about this chronological progression. What have you noticed in breast tissue? You know, it's everybody's thermal fingerprint is different, so you can't really compare um, different people. So, yeah, I, I, it just depends. You know, um, we see a lot of fibrocystic. We do see a lot of lymphatic congestion. So, you know, it's hard to compare from person to person. You know, the individual patient's thermal pattern should not change. Okay, well listen, this is very exciting for myself. I just thoroughly enjoy learning new information. We're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna be right back. I'm a chiropractor because my, my goal, my passion is to help people get better without medication. There's different types of chiropractic. I wanted to be involved in something that was bigger than myself. Here I would say it's been so much more than just seeing those lives transform, it's been being able to be a part of their transformation. Wellness is a state of mental, social, and physical well-being. Really wellness is from the inside out being able to have your body make the decisions on its own, naturally, without drugs, medications, or, or surgeries. We work and strive at addressing each one of those different facets of wellness so that it's really a, a well-rounded overall approach for an individual. I think the atmosphere is really very welcoming. I think all three really work well together as a team. It's, it's much more than you would find somewhere else. The individuality of it, uh, the recommendations, the doctor's expertise. We do not use a cookie cutter plan. Every person that comes into our office is very unique and they have specific plans and treatment protocols specific for their findings. Utilizing our innovative tools and technology, we're able to get the best results and faster and it's really easy on, on the practice member, specifically with the thermal scans that we do by measuring the ambient skin temperature. We're able to measure from each assessment how the pattern's changing. We offer digital video fluoroscopy, motion films of a person's spine, getting right to the root cause. From someone that was previously diagnosed with ADHD and was having developmental delays in speech, working with them here and seeing the transformation of them developmentally, other things, attention span, energy, colic, all these things that are improving over a period of time. So whether it's a little baby that's getting adjusted for the first time or a mom that's getting adjusted or an athlete, it's really cool to see what we're able to do and how that can impact their life for the long term. The two things, chiropractic care and nutrition, go hand in hand and you really need both components. You can't just say, I'll do whatever I want nutritionally and then just have chiropractic care and Dr. Bob will just fix me. Really, you have to have both going together. In our wellness store, we offer a variety of different products. They're all professional lines and products that are tried and true. We have many different types of evaluations and assessments 
that can tell us what supplement is going to be best for one of our practice members here in the office so that we're just not throwing the dice when it comes to their health. The Drop List Doctors is very forward thinking. It's a lot different than anything else that I had ever seen before. So I felt like I was learning something new. We have information on social media, our website, our blog. We do TV programs. So we're always putting out good quality information because more often than not I hear from somebody, I never knew that. Or I got that information from a magazine or a TV program and I never really knew that that wasn't correct. So being able to give them simple tools and natural principles that they can be able to empower themselves to make every day, that's really, it, it, it's really exciting for me to be able to see people in their changed lifestyles. Come and join us and participate with natural drugless chiropractic care. Hello, this is Dr. Bob and Dr. Case and Dee Maria. We'd like to welcome you once again to The Drugless Doctor. We've been enjoying some wonderful conversation with Dr. Deborah, and we're here to give you innovative technology, just a simple option instead of mammograms. So we have more questions that we're going to be discussing with, with Dr. Deborah, just to ask the questions that I know that you at home or anywhere in the world could be asking. So Dr. Deborah, do you, who, who assesses the thermography? So once I do the scans, they are sent to a radiologist to be read. So we don't read those. They're, they're sent to um, someone who has been trained and who has a lot of experience in reading the scans. The, um, there's doctors all over the world that do it. Uh, the particular company that we use also keeps your scans indefinitely. So if you get a scan here and then you move to Australia, you can still have access to your scan. Um, this company has thermographers all over the world. So that's, that's another thing. So once you get a baseline, you're never going to have to repeat it and your scans are kept forever. So I think what's interesting for those of you that are in our office or people who are part of our core uh, group is that you may consider coming to where our, our main office is in Cleveland, Ohio, have an assessment when we have Dr. Deborah in. Let us create a plan because see what we have learned, if you may have a possibility of having some hormonal uh, breast health, we can do urine testing to you, checking your estrogen level. We can do iodine levels to you, checking your iodine. We can check out your vitamin D levels. And we talk about this in Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones. So, we are approaching female hormonal health from the inside out. Dr. Kaysen. Now, with um, different people, and we're talking about who should get a, a breast ther thermography done. Now, does it matter? You were saying in there a little bit as far as like or tw even late 20s to start getting the baseline assessment. Now, do you want to tell us what about the follow-up assessments? What would you recommend? And the second question is, what if someone's on her menstrual cycle or um, medications, other factors, would that inhibit a scan or change a scan? Okay, so initially uh, when you get your first thermogram, you need to come back three months later for a follow-up. And that's just to establish your baseline. When we do the first thermogram, we don't know what your normal thermal pattern is. So this way in three months, if we do another one and the thermal pattern remains the same, we know that that's your stable thermal pattern. Then after that, how, what should be the next time? Uh, annually, once okay. a year. Um, as far as menstrual cycle or things like that, it's not necessarily going to change the pattern. It may change some of the temperature variation. So, um, you know, it may show, uh, the pattern may show a little bit hotter depending on uh, your um, hormonal cycle, but the pattern isn't going to change. So I have another okay. question that came to my head. Have you noticed like mothers and daughters, have you had enough people come through that, let's just say that Dr. Kaysen's mom came in and had this pattern, and then Dr. Kaysen came in. Do you see patterns, family patterns? You know, that's not something that I've really taken a look at yet. Okay, because you know how they talk about if your mom had yeah. breast cancer, then yeah. you're gonna have breast cancer, you know, et cetera. Well, and that's another thing, you know, only 25% of, of breast cancer is genetic. So you have that whole 75% that's environmental and nutrition and diet and all that stuff that you guys do in your office. So, you know, it's, this helps to give you just more information to 
do what you need to do with your lifestyle. That's why I talked about the, like Brock 1 and Brock 2. There's only a small percentage of people that have that. And the reason I mentioned the iodine, the vitamin D, and the urine estrogen, those are the markers that we use. And then what's going on inside of a woman's breast, that pattern, it's all interrelated with each other. Dr. Kaysen. Now we were talking also at the break that if someone was pregnant, you necessarily wouldn't be getting a breast thermography during that time or during breastfeeding necessarily because it changes the pattern. So it'd be better prior to getting pregnant or after breastfeeding. And right. I know we're promoting breastfeeding as long as possible. So that might vary. But if you needed a thermogram, you could do it because you already established the baseline, right. correct? Mm -hmm. So you already have that. Now, we were also talking about people that have had a history of breast cancer. Maybe they've had a mastectomy. Let's talk a little bit about people that have had breast cancer or maybe as far as structurally, they don't have a breast or both breasts. So right. let's talk about that also example for people. So I, I have many women who have had mastectomies that will come in and do the thermography because they're no longer able to do the mammogram. Um, it's also great for women who have breast implants um, mm. because sometimes, you know, they Very don't want to do the, the mammogram, the, you know, squeezing that they do. So it's great for women who have That's implants good. too. Also on a thermogram, you can see if there has been, um, sometimes women who have had implants are concerned if the implants have broken. And that mm. is also something you can see on a thermogram. I, I have had several questions about that. If we could actually see the silicone or the fluid outside of the implant on film and no we cannot so that's really also something where maybe someone wants to check right that would be an option for them yep so my question then is is that this whole mammogram issue is sometimes it's like throwing the dice they right. really we're not saying they do or they don't know but let's just say okay at the time period right now mammograms a question let's say that you're 55 years old you really never had a mammogram you don't want a mammogram so how often and how old should they, when can they start? Because someone might be 60 and say, oh, I'm not going to have anybody do that to me. But Yeah, I, have, I do have a lot of women who come in for the first time to do a thermogram in their, you know, 50s and 60s. Uh, and it's, I think it's a personal decision at that point. Some people would say that it's a good idea to get a mammogram just to rule out that there's nothing structurally there. Okay. Because with the thermogram, if there is a tumor already there, the thermogram isn't going to pick that up because it hasn't that, been changed. We need to say that again, okay? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> if there is a tumor there and you have a thermogram, it's not going to pick it up because the thermogram is picking up changes in the breast. So if someone had a mammogram and they got a clean bill of health, they would be very wise to have a thermogram because yes. then you could duplicate the two. But exactly. I guess what you're also saying is kind of like when you start brushing your teeth, well, when your teeth come out, when do you start having thermography? Truthfully, probably in their 20s, they should at least have their first so you can establish a pattern and literally get this breast fingerprint their entire life. This is like very... Because nobody's ever really talked like this before. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're seeing in our practice is that we're seeing these fatty livers now because of eating too much fruit, too many toxicities. Well, we know that fruit and a congested liver impacts the estrogen level in the body. And I don't know how much, and we're going to be doing our own research, we could write a research yes. article on this, is if estrogen changes the pattern. Because we see fatty livers that shrink. It's just so exciting yeah. that we're able to do all of this. It's great. And what I'm just thinking here is as chiropractors, we talk about changing the trajectory of someone's life. So if a kid is born and has that, that chiropractic adjustment, and then they go through school and they're not having different um, things that could happen to him. So he's not being diagnosed with ADHD and then he doesn't have the medication. So even with the breast thermography, someone getting their baseline, having